All right, just got a new package in. Let's open it up and see what it could be. I'm hoping it's new parts for our motor so we can get moving on that. Let's see what we got here. All right, this is everything I ordered from Engine Tech Dallas. So I ordered it from a website called, I believe, ProfessionalEngineBuilders.com. Um, I've never ordered from these people before. I'm in no way affiliated, but they seem to have good price on good prices on everything. So I went ahead. I've got lifters. I've got all new lifters here. I believe those are lifters. I've got uh, I've got rod bearings, rod bearings here. New camshaft. Should be a gasket set. Um, Piston rings, new piston rings, and uh, what, what's in this guy? Let's see, what, what do we got here? Oh, here, oops, got to be careful with those. What we got here is the crankshaft bearings, um, which I'm going to begin putting in here uh, very shortly. So that's my next project, so I can get that crank back in this motor and get moving on that. So today I am working on cam bearings. I ordered this cam bearing puller from uh, Jegs. It's a great deal. It's only like 20, 30 bucks. But it's not as not as fancy as the fancier ones I've seen where they kind of, you lock them in place and they kind of hold the bearing. But with this little seal, um, with this little rubber gasket they put on there, I feel like it'll hold it just fine. But what I did is I went around and I marked the oil ports before I get started, one thing I want to know is where these oil ports are. i got to make sure to put the new ones in the exact same spot. Um, this very end one, for example, has, has two holes. And I want to, I'm going to mark each of these so that I get them in the right spot. And then I'm going to follow that all the way down. So I'm going to mark these, make sure I get them all in the right spot, and then just start Start knocking them out of there and putting the new ones in. First I'm going to take the old ones out. I'm going to uh, go ahead and take those old ones out. And then I'm going to work on installing the new ones in the proper position. And then so I can get that part done. So I'm going to start with this end bearing right here. I'm going to put this in there. All right. Okay. That bearing's out. We got number one done. All right. So on the second bearing, I'm going ahead and putting it in there. And then I'm going to slide this little cone shape in right in there just to make sure it kind of holds it in place. And then I'm going to tap this in with my hammer. Okay, that's number two. Okay, now I'm on number three right there. They are coming out pretty smooth so far. Let's see here in this box I've got my there they are. I have my new my new camshaft bearings. Um, so these are the bearings I'm going to install back in that block. And as you can see, they've got the, the holes. And I'm going to try and line those back up the best that I can. One bearing has two holes in it that I pulled out. And all the other ones have one. So let's take a look. 
So, I'm careful trying not to touch the inside of the bearing. I guess that's something you're not supposed to do. I don't know. But I put a mark there, or attempted to with paint marker there and there where I'm going to put the holes. Uh, the interesting thing is, I'm not sure it really matters that much where you put the hole. Um, especially considering this entire channel is dug out all the way around. Um, to me it seems more important that you don't put the bearing too far this way or too far this way so that the hole at least is where this channel is. Um, try and look there. But kind of looking down, the oil is going to travel through this passage and then come out where those holes are at. So does it really matter? Um, I don't know. I'm just going to try and put it where the factory had it. So I'm going to line these two holes up up there. However, I'm going to start at the other end. I'm going to start down here. I'm going to put that one in first. And this one, this one, this one. And like I said, I marked where the holes, where the holes were. I don't know how important that is, but at least they will all be the same. So I put the bearing on this first. And so, so it's on there. What I'm going to do is slide it into place, lining the hole up to where it used to be. Well, here we go. We'll try and... I'm going to look for my mark for the hole. It appears to be going in straight. Just making sure. So, I'm going to check. I can see where the old one used to stop. Okay, I think I'm about there. Let's see, it looks like it. So, Zoom in, maybe. That one appears to be where it's supposed to be. On to the next one. Start getting the bottom in, put back together. That's what I'd like to do to start making some progress on this thing. I want to get this all buttoned back up. So I've got this little piece of plastic gauge and see if it'll... Uh, anyway, what I'm going to do is place it here with my bearing cap. Um, I'm going to put it on there. And um, hopefully it stayed there. I'm then going to torque this, uh, put the cap on uh, with the bearing, torque it down and see what it smashes out to. And then I'm going to check that on my gauge to see what it reads. So I torqued both of these to 15 foot pounds and then it calls to then uh, tighten it up to 70 degrees. And so if <clears throat> 70 degrees is just short of 90. So if you can see on there it's flattened out. Let's compare it and see how much it flattened out to. You know? So what we've got is our, our, our plastic gauge and we've got our gauge right here. There's our, our, our squished plastic gauge and it, it lines up very closely with .002. Um, if you can see that. Anyway, that's, that's within the spec that I found for that bearing. So, um, off camera, I'm just kind of comparing the two again. Mm. 
So I was checking these other caps, they're all about the same, or the plastic gauge. So I think I'm good. Um, I'll add point zero zero two, which appears to be in spec from what I could find. So I gotta clean that off each of these. Then I'm going to going to put some oil on them and uh, torque them down. Today I have been working on cleaning up these pistons. Uh, I kind of tried to clean up the excess carbon and stuff on, off them the best I could. I can't spend too much time, I'm not going to spend too much time on them. But I'm replacing the piston rings. I've got all new piston rings that I'm putting in here. Um, getting all those taken care of. So getting the piston rings in. Uh, pulling the old ones out, cleaning the carbon off, and then putting all the, the new ones in there. So I've got five of them done, and I just got one more to go. So some of these old piston rings basically just crumble in my hand as I start to take them off. They're not flexible at all anymore. They basically just, they're brittle. Um, so that's, I don't know, they probably would have still lasted a long time in here. Um, Honestly, you're gonna watch your eyes with these things if they break like that. The top one was still was still uh, flexible, but that middle one was pretty brittle. And then, so as I go and go and uh, pull all the old ones out, you have to be very careful. Last night, I I took my glove off for a second while I was pulling one of these off, and I uh, cut my finger. That was that was my fault. Um, and these these get sharp. They sit there and get grunt. So I'm trying to be smarter and wear gloves today. Um, probably should have glasses on, but I'm just about there. So I've I've got all the old rings out. These are oops, these are the new rings that I still have to just put in there. Um, it's very straightforward. They're labeled top ring and then second groove and then the bottom group. Um, they, it's very straightforward how they go in and uh, pretty quick and easy to to replace. So I was just using a little WD-40 and some scotch Bright to kind of clean that and really trying to get these, these grooves clean. That's where I was focusing most of my energy. Trying to get the stuff off the top too, but a lot of that's very baked on. I currently have all of the pistons back in except for this last one. Um, when I was going to put this one together, um, I, I clean these off. Uh, they're not perfect, but they're a lot cleaner than they were. Um, I clean these off, and then I was replacing the piston rings. And this second one down is more brittle than like the top and the bottom one. So I had originally put it in the wrong place, and then I realized, like, oops, I was double checking everything, that I put it in the wrong place. So I went to pull the second ring back off, and when I did that, it becomes very brittle. Um, it, it becomes brittle and it actually uh, broke. So, um, yeah, unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, it broke and I, um, I had to order another one just for a single cylinder. So I ordered another one. I got that one in, and so um, now I just need to finish this up. So one thing, one thing I do. Um, I need, just need to replace these bearings. I got the new bearings for it right here. I need to put those in. And another thing I, I need to do when I put it back together is cover these threads with a little thread protector so that when I drop the piston down in there, I don't damage the crank. Because um, that always, that's always a good way to ruin your day as well. Um, 
I didn't have a spring compressor, I mean a, a ring compressor, so I made one out of a plastic jug. And it was working just fine with the hose clamp and doing that. And you drop it in, just kind of tap it right into place. But since I was at the store, um, since I was at the store and I saw one just sitting there, I figured I'll pick up the real one and just try it and see if it works a little bit better this time. I thought I had one laying around here, but I couldn't find it. So I just went and got another one. And uh, so I'm going to put new bearings on there and then I'm going to um, put new bearings on there and put the protectors on the threads, drop it in and get all of that ready to go. Another thing I did with the other pistons which I, I, it's a similar process of what I did with the crank. I used a little bit of that plastic gauge just to double check the bearing uh, tolerances, make sure I had the right bearings, make sure um, it's within spec and all of the other ones were within spec so anyway that's that's good I'm glad that just kind of helps me verify that I'm working with the right stuff so get started so I've got the piston ring compressor here this is just a, another good old Harbor Freight special put it around the piston and uh, yeah this one seems to be working, uh, working pretty good. It sucked it all down evenly, all the way around it, and uh, we'll try and drop it in there. See if we can get it the slide. Um, see if we can get it the slide into place. Alright, so it's in place. Um, these protected it from getting scratched. So we're all good there. Made sure to coat everything really good with the assembly lube. And there we go. Now we gotta torque everything down. So the last time I tried to put this on, I had pulled off the entire assembly, put this on it first, and then tried to put it on. But with the dowel pins and everything else, it just didn't want to line up and go on straight. This little this little lip in here kept wanting to fold back over. So I wanted to try it different this time so that I could... I wanted to put this on first and then try and have a little bit more room to make sure that this lip doesn't bend over backwards so that's what I was gonna try I was gonna put just a little little oil on it um, and then at least get it started over the crank before I start sliding it in to the assembly That actually worked much better. For some reason, like the way the dowel lines up just wouldn't let me put it on there straight. 